Lots of people think that pathology is just about dead bodies. That's simply not true. Pathology is a very alive science and pathologists play a very important role at the patient's bedside. In this short video, we're going to examine the outbreak of hospital superbugs. And more importantly, we're going to look at the key role that pathologists have played in engaging with the public in order to raise awareness of these bugs and to reduce infection rates in this country. Now, these aren't bacteria that you might find in your kitchen cooking every day. These pose a serious threat to vulnerable patients. We have to get rid of them. This is Operation Superbug. So first things first, we need to actually define what a superbug actually is. Now, we've just seen that there are billions and billions of bacteria that are living around us all the time. And many of them are actually quite useful to us because they help to keep certain parts of our body clean and they also help to prevent certain infections. So what is it about the superbugs that's such a concern to pathologists? Well, the truth is, and particularly in the case of our prime suspect, Many of these superbugs are resistant to the drugs that we give to try and kill them. That's antibiotics. Now you might have taken antibiotics for a chest infection or something similar in the past. Many of the bugs are resistant to those drugs. So it reduces the amount of drugs that we can give in order to try and fight these infections. But also, in some cases, what we're going to see is that these bugs are very, very contagious. And we have to keep them very contained to stop them from spreading. So let's have a look at our prime suspect that we're going to focus on for most of this video and also its accomplices. The first of our prime suspects is the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, otherwise known as MRSA. The first of its accomplices, the lesser known Clostridium difficile, otherwise referred to as C. diff, responsible for causing infections of people on broad spectrum antibiotics. And finally, the norovirus. The norovirus is sometimes referred to as the diarrhea and vomiting bug. So now we have our three prime suspects, it's time to start the job of getting rid of them. Now to successfully battle against these superbugs, to try and get rid of the infections, the microbiologists, which is a form of pathologist, were in charge of coming up with strategies to completely get rid of them, or lower rates to as low a rate as possible. And that involved engaging with the public. They needed to develop campaigns, they needed to work with government bodies such as the Department for Health in order to engage with the public and make them aware of how big a problem this was and also work in order to raise awareness of these problems. And they started by doing something very simple, to get people to wash their hands. All of us wash our hands every single day, but this was going to be a key weapon in the battle against the superbugs. It didn't take too long for trusts to start to display these sorts of posters that encourage staff, patients and their relatives to wash their hands in order to stop the spread of infection. But the key question is, did it really work? Now getting people to wash their hands was nothing particularly new. Many years ago a man called Semmel Weiss noted that as doctors went between their patients, if they washed their hands then death rates fell dramatically and that was because they weren't passing on infections to those patients. But what we've seen here is an example of pathologists trying to make the public aware with big graphic posters that they must wash their hands before they go into a ward, before they leave a ward, between seeing relatives. It's really important to wash their hands to prevent the spread of infection. And the campaigns that we've just seen really try to raise awareness of that. Now, as well as those campaigns and the focus on hand washing, we also had something else that's even more convenient that complements that process. And that comes in the form of something that looks like this, an alcohol gel dispenser. Now these are incredibly easy to use. This particular one can clip onto a belt and all that happens is a couple of squirts into the hands, rub it in, and that's it, job done. And nowadays, on almost every ward, 
you'll find a small alcohol gel dispenser and a red line, a big graphic red line that says stop and wash your hands. All thanks to the initiative of pathologists and microbiologists. But of course, the major disadvantage here is they're incredibly easy to use, it's incredibly quick. It doesn't do the full job. Rather, these are supposed to complement hand washing. You can't simply just use an alcohol hand gel and presume that everything's fine. It's important to wash your hands, dry them, and then use something like this, because this will not do the full job. Now, of course, hand washing wasn't the only tactic that pathologists needed to engage with the public about. So let's look at the next step in the battle, and that was in the use of antibiotics. So let's talk about how antibiotics and resistance works. We can see here a petri dish full of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. Those that are sensitive to methicillin will simply die, but the ones that remain will be methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. They will multiply and divide within the body. Now if we then take a blood culture from a patient and spread this on a special petri dish, then they'll test positive for MRSA. Now that appears usually as a gold colour, so if we have a look at that in the real world, it looks something like this. So it's probably a good idea that we get the opinion of a real pathologist on all of the issues we've talked about so far. So as a pathologist yourself, do you think it's important to engage with the public on issues such as the superbug infection? Well, clearly it's very important not just for our patients, but also for the public to be aware of the risks associated with these infections so that we reduce the incidence of the infection out there in society. So when patients and relatives come into hospitals, there are all the hand rubs and whatever that are available to them in hospital, um, and then they adopt healthy practices when they're at home as well, which also helps to uh, reduce the, uh, the spread of these infections. So yes, engagement with the public is absolutely crucial for any of the strategies to reduce the risks associated with superbug infections. So how has the impact of the superbugs um, affected the prescribing of antibiotics in hospitals? Oh, we're, we're much more careful nowadays about how we prescribe antibiotics. Uh, there's almost invariably a, a, an antibiotic policy, so that for any particular infection you're giving the right antibiotic at uh, the right time and the right dose. Uh, that you only continue antibiotics for the required period of time um, and if you do get more serious infections that they're treated appropriately um, so the use of antibiotics correctly is very very important look at the rates of mrsa bacteremia that's mrsa in the blood we can see that they've decreased dramatically in just four years thanks to infection control measures if we look at similar data for the rates of Clostridium difficile, we can also see that there's been a dramatic decrease in the rates of infection thanks to the vigilant use of antibiotics. Now, norovirus is a little bit different. It tends to fluctuate in the year, peaking around winter months when we have the winter diarrhea and vomiting bugs. But if we look at data from the HPA, we can see these fluctuations and how they still vary year on year. Now, throughout this video, we've looked at the reasons why these infection rates have fallen. Engaging with the public has ensured that we have better attention to hand washing, that we make them aware of hand gel dispensers, we increase the monitoring, and we have more vigilant use of antibiotics. So what can we conclude from this short video? Well, put in the context of hospital superbugs, we can see how engaging with the public has had an incredibly positive impact in reducing infection rates. But of course, we can't just restrict pathology to this one area. Pathology spans into many different areas, haematology being another example, histopathology being another example. And pathologists work very, very closely in working out diagnoses with other medical professionals, with surgeons, for example. So what we've really seen is that pathologists and their engagement with people, their engagement with the public, has an incredibly positive impact on improving pathology. And what this has really shown us is that pathology is at the heart of curing disease.